Ah, hello lovelies, the day that you have been preparing for for years is nearly here. The day that some of you have been dreading for months is nearly here. Results day is nearly here. For A levels on the 18th of August and for GCSEs on the 25th of August. I have loads and loads of stuff coming up to talk through everything and I've just set up a Discord server where I'll be chatting and answering your questions specifically, definitely on those days and in general otherwise. So this year's grades are going to be a little bit different. There is going to be generous grading but what does that actually mean for grades and how might this mean that grade boundaries actually go up? Every single year the grade boundaries are set after all of the exams have been marked. This is so if there was one paper or question that everyone found particularly hard, they can adjust the grade boundaries, shift them up and down a little bit so that a 6 or an A in 2018 is equivalent to a 6 or an A in 2019. And if for some reason physics paper 2 was particularly hard, that year, you don't get a whole load of physicists coming out with lower grades than they did in 2018 because they just sat a hard paper. That wasn't fair. So that's why grade boundaries shift a little bit, and it's generally only a little bit, up or down each year so that the grades are comparable. Obviously, we've just had a pandemic and we've had two years of centre assessed grades. Now in 2020, the first year of centre assessed grades, teachers worked very, very hard to put in all of their grades and then they got um, adjusted, standardised, that's the word, by the exam boards and the, the analytical side of that didn't go quite so well. So they standardised it and then they unstandardised it all and just gave them one centre assessed grades. So then in 2021, they said, we are going to have central assessed grades again, you are going to need evidence, but we're not going to standardise your results. So your, the, the results that the teachers put in were the results that you got, which means taking a little chemistry as an example. In 2019, 7% of people got A stars, and in 2021, 20% of people got A stars. Now this 7% of people who get A stars has been pretty standard and is pretty standard across all A-level subjects. And the fact that it's gone up massively to 20% of people getting A stars for A-level is not normal. It's just because everyone you got given the grades in 2021. Now the examples want to make grades comparable across the year, so they don't want 2022 students to be disadvantaged because you actually sat exams and you didn't have central assessed grades like 2021 students. So to um, not disadvantage you against the 2021 students who got higher grades than maybe if they had actually sat exams and the 2019 students who actually sat exams but had a whole school career behind them, they're going to be doing generous grading this year. So it's going to be sitting in between. So they can still draw their bell curve. And when I say draw their bell curve, it's not like they know exactly how many students are going to get an A star or a nine. They, the results are statistically aligned and then four and seven are statistically aligned and everything else is divided between them. So it's very, very complicated and you don't need to worry about it too much because that side of it doesn't actually affect you. They are going to be shifting it slightly so that more people are going to be getting nines, more people are going to be getting A stars than you would say if you sat it in 2019. So they're not going to be disadvantaged to you. There is going to be generous grading. They're going to shift the bell curve over slightly. But what this actually means for grade boundaries is quite different and confusing. It doesn't mean that they're automatically lowering with the grade boundaries. They're just shifting the bell curve over so more people get the higher grades. And more people will get, say if you in 2019 you might have got three, this year you might actually just tip over and get that four, which would be amazing. Now, generous grading, more people getting higher grades, doesn't mean generous marking. When the examiners are marking your exams, if you've written something right down, you'll get the mark. 
if you've written something wrong down, you won't get the mark. They're not being generous in their marking. If you've got something right, you'll get the mark. If you haven't, you won't get the mark. They're not kind of like going, oh, we've been told to be generous this year, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and I'll mark them correct. That is not what is happening. Your marks are still going to be your marks. Now, I have heard that there is the potential for grey boundaries to actually go up, which is not what you're expecting. And there's this very, very complicated balance between marks, grey boundaries, and the generous grading that the exam boards have been told to do. It's because all of the extra help you've been given this year might actually mean that loads and loads of people do amazingly well in their exams. So with all the advanced information, with the, the equation sheets that you got given for um, maths and for physics, might actually mean that the grey boundaries go up and the number of people getting the higher marks goes up, even though it doesn't feel like it should be that way around. And it feels wrong, but if everyone did like amazingly well and everyone got like over 80% in their exams because of the advanced information and the the equation sheets that were given out we can't just give everyone like nines that's not how it works they are still going to be using the statistical alignment and generous gray boundaries so shifting that over a bit but if everyone did amazingly well and got everything um correct 80% of stuff correct in the exam the grade boundaries might actually go up so on results day the important thing is not the actual grade boundaries um the um, there is nothing that you or anyone can then do to change the grade boundaries they are done they are fixed that is um um there's nothing we can do to change that the only reason for you to go and look at the grey boundaries is if um, you thought you were maybe close to a grey boundary and you wanted to get a paper, one particular paper, checked um, or remarked, but there is no guarantee that that would actually mean that your grade would go up in that circumstance. So that is the the complicated system that, that we have going on this year there is going to be generous grading so that um when you're being compared against 2002 2021 students that you don't come off worse because you actually sat exams but that doesn't mean generous um generous marking and it doesn't mean that the grade boundaries are definitely going down i'm going to be doing lots of videos to explain the whole process of results day to you um, what about appeals, appeals, um, advanced information, lots and lots of things, so, um, hang around guys, and, yeah, we'll properly be ready for next year. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.